Hey, I'm Josh Smith with Dental Claim Support, and welcome to the Dental Claim Support Podcast. Uh, today I want to talk about coordination of benefits. Yes, boring. Um, nobody loves coordination of benefits. Sometimes uh, when a patient comes into your office with dual insurance, you're like, no, it would have been a lot easier if you just came in with one. But it's part of it. Uh, patients can be covered under one, two, sometimes even three insurances, and we need to know exactly how to coordinate these benefits. So the definition of coordination of benefits is, uh, explains the determination of benefits for a patient with multiple insurance plans. So in layman's terms, when a patient comes into your office with multiple insurances, who's primary, who's secondary, and we need to know exactly the laws that define who makes up primary and secondary, and that's what we're gonna be going over today. Uh, there are many rules and uh, regulations uh, put in place by the ADA in order to uh, figure out who's primary and who's secondary and to accurately define the coordination of benefits, and that's what we'll discuss. So how does a patient end up with multiple insurance plans? Um, there are a few different ways. Uh, you can have children come into your office that are covered under both of their parents. You can have um, a husband and wife come into your office and they're each covered under each other. Those are the typical ways that somebody's gonna have dual insurance. Um, there are also a few other reasons. Uh, a patient can be part of a federal policy such as FEHB or FEP, such as a federal employee program. You know, a lot of these are administered through Blue Cross Blue Shield of many various states. You can also be qualified for Medicaid. Um, so a patient can come in covered under their own policy with Medicaid, as well as a private insurance. Uh, Medicaid will always be the secondary policy, but that is another way somebody can have dual insurance. And also a um, covered child that is also under 26 years old and has their own insurance. So uh, under the government uh, laws right now, a 26 year old and under can be covered still under their parents, but that 26 year old could also be in the workforce and have their own insurance as well. This is another way that a patient can have dual insurances. So a lot of patients think, you know, I have two insurance plans, so that means I get double the benefits, but that is not always the case. There are not many duplicating clauses out there. There's a lot of non-duplication of benefits. So non-duplicating clause, meaning that the secondary is not necessarily going to just pay double or exactly what the primary paid. And in most cases, that is going to be the case. Um, but having two or more insurances does help better with covering expenses and uh, providing more insurance pay to the office for the patient in order for the patient not to come out of pocket. Um, but giving your patient the knowledge about their dual insurance benefits before treatment is essential. So whenever you're, whenever you're explaining a case to a patient or really educating them on their insurance, you need to be able to explain what dual insurance really means and coordination of benefits as a whole. Um, again, this is another reason to always do insurance verification. So getting into the nuts and bolts of coordination of benefits. You know, how can we determine the order of benefits for a patient with dual insurance? Uh, there are many different rules. Uh, the first one is gonna be the birthday rule. So going back to that example, a child comes into your office covered by both parents who is going to be the primary and who's going to be the secondary birthday rule is very simple. Whichever parent's birthday comes earlier in the year is going to be the primary. So in the case of a mother and father, the mother's bir uh, birthday is February, the father's is April. It doesn't matter how long each have had their policy. It doesn't matter who's actually older. It only goes by the birth month. So the mother born in February would be the primary insurance for the child and the father born in April would be the secondary for the child. Very simple. Uh, another way is if uh, two spouses had coverage on each other. Um, so if I came into an office and my wife also has insurance, my own policy is going to be my primary. And if I'm covered under my wife, she, her insurance is going to be my secondary. And we also have the Medicare rule. So again, going back to the uh, Medicaid and Medicare uh, laws, Medicaid is always going to be secondary. So if a patient was covered under a private insurance such as MetLife, Delta, Blue Cross Blue Shield, many of them, right? Medicaid is always going to be secondary to that uh, private insurance, which will be the primary. And lastly is gonna be divorce rules. And this is where it gets a little, a little hairy. Um, if a divorce decree states that one of the parents is responsible for the child's well-being and health care, that parent's always going to be the primary and then the secondary will be figured out 
afterward. If there is no court decree, there, are, there is a level of one, two, three, and four on how coordination of benefits is going to be applied. So again, no court decree. Um, primary is always going to start with the plan covering the custodial parent. Then it goes to the plan covering the spouse of the custodial parent. Third, the plan covering the non-custodial parent. And fourth, the plan covering the spouse of the non-custodial parent. Again, plan covering the custodial parent, plan covering the spouse of the custodial parent. Then it goes to the plan covering the non-custodial parent and then the plan covering the spouse of the non-custodial parent. This is something that you always wanna figure out when it comes to insurance verification. If you know that a child has divorced parents, get this information up front when you're doing the insurance verification. So dental offices need to have a basic understanding of these rules to properly handle account setups. Dental office is also responsible uh, for making sure their patients properly understand these benefits when dealing with dual insurance. Again, explain this to your patient, educate your patient. Before this happens, you have to do insurance verification. It all starts with insurance verification. Uh, another little tidbit is uh, make sure your patients are updating their own coordination of benefits insurance or info with their insurance. So a lot of different uh, private insurances, they send out a questionnaire every single year uh, to their patient saying, please give us an update of any insurance information. A lot of times this has to be filled out before they'll process claims. Even if you've coordinated benefits correctly, you've sent the claim correctly to the primary insurance, they might still be one of these insurances that send a questionnaire out to their patient. So keep a list of these patients. If you're ever working an insurance agent report, you're finding out that the patient has an updated in, uh, insurance information or coordination of benefits information. Keep a list of these um, insurances that do this and then educate your patients again. Send out reminders to your patients. Hey, every single year, Blue Cross, Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina needs you to fill this out in order for them to process claims. This will save you a lot of time. It'll save you a lot of money in the future. All right, coordination of benefits, not everybody's favorite, but we all need to know how to do it. I hope this really helps. Uh, again, please remember, keep going to dentalclaimsupport.com. That's www.dentalclaimsupport.com uh, for more blogs, more tips, and really anything dental billing related. Thank you.